Let's talk briefly about the interaction between two-phase commit and two-phase locking. Okay, we're going to be doing strict two-phase locking here. One of the things that we're going to want to do to make sure things work is to ensure that the point-to-point -point messages between any pair of nodes are densely ordered. So we're going to put uh, order numbers on these messages. We're going to number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 without gaps. Okay, so these are going to be dense per sender receiver transaction ID triple. So sender X to receiver Y is going to order all the messages for a given transaction, one, two, three, four, five, for that transaction for that recipient. Okay, the receiver therefore can detect if there's anything missing or out of order from any given sender. And it, when it sees something that's out of order, so suppose it receives message K plus one, it'll buffer that message until all of the messages one through K have been received from that sender. And so the effect is that the receiver is going to consider the messages from each sender in the order in which they were sent. Okay, so this is just a simple protocol for making sure that every sender receiver channel uh, sends messages effectively in order, which is to say the receiver deals with the messages as if they were in the order they were sent. Okay, given that ordered communication is enforced in this way, here's how commit works. When a participant receives a commit request, it knows that it has already received all the messages for that transaction from the coordinator, and therefore it's already touched all the data it's ever going to touch, and it has all the locks it needs to commit. So at that point, it flushes all its log records as usual locally, and then drops its locks atomically locally in strict two-phase commit style. If it receives an abort message, again, it's received all the messages for this transaction already because of the uh, message ordering we talked about earlier. And so it's safe to abort autonomously, and it can do so entirely locally because the abort from the coordinator means that definitely all participants will abort. So we'll just go ahead and abort locally. There's no issue with cascading aborts because of strict two-phase commit. And so we log appropriately. We do our, our uh, logging for two-phase commit, which in our case presumed abort, pretty straightforward. We log an abort record. And we perform the local undo with Aries dropping locks atomically at the end of transaction in strict two-phase locking style. Now, there are concerns about availability in a transactional distributed system. What happens if one node goes down? Is the system available? Well, unfortunately, when one node is down, other nodes don't know if a transaction is committed or aborted, so they're sort of in limbo. And if they're in limbo, that means they're holding their strict two-phase locks. And so certain data is in, it's unavailable, essentially, to the system. If uh, another transaction wants to look at that data, it'll end up on a wait queue on a lock, and that lock is not going to clear while the node is down. So that could be a pretty bad thing. So availability of distributed transactions is not great. And if you want to build a system that's super high availability, that can survive the failure of a single node, two-phase commit introduces certain tricky issues that you have to solve in some other way. Now, the system is going to be heart beating, right? The participants are responding to the coordinator periodically saying, I'm alive. And if the coordinator doesn't hear from a participant for a while, it can assume the participant is dead, and it can cause that participant to be respawned on another piece of hardware, on a new computer. And that new computer would recover from the log for that participant. That assumes, of course, that the log device is still readable. So if it can read from that log, it'll recover the database on a new computer and re-enter the system as a clone of that participant. If the old participant comes back from the dead, we'll just ignore it and tell it to recycle itself. Okay, So these participants will have to have some notion of an internet address or some other ID that distinguishes the old one from the new one. So that when the old one responds, responds from the dead, the coordinator can say, hey, I'm ignoring your messages. Okay, So it's possible for the coordinator to respawn a dead node, and that needs to happen to keep the system available. What happens if the coordinator dies? That's a real problem. Okay, And originally, when two-phase commit was invented, this was the Achilles heel of two-phase commit. It could recover from a failed participant by respawning it. It could not recover from a failed coordinator. And so various other schemes were invented. There was something called three-phase commit, which was an attempt to deal with a dead coordinator. Three-phase commit didn't quite work. And this problem uh, was one that was open for quite a while. And essentially, Leslie Lamport's Paxos consensus protocol, which wasn't invented until the 1990s, was the eventual solution to this kind of a problem. And Paxos was coupled into a two-phase commit protocol in a scheme called Paxos commit, which provides a comprehensive solution 
to avoid coordinator failure problems. And so this is a paper that was a combination of two Turing Award winners, Jim Gray and Leslie Lamport, one classically from distributed databases and the other from distributed systems. Um, and Paxos Commit solves the problem of a dead coordinator by having a uh, set of replicated coordinators that are fault tolerant. So the way that um, Paxos Commit works is beyond the scope of this class, but if you're curious, I encourage you to go read it. I will warn you that the Paxos papers from Lamport are extremely difficult to read, and I'd encourage you to start with Wikipedia or some other popular source to learn about Paxos before going off and reading Lamport's papers. The Paxos Commit paper is actually pretty simple once you know Paxos and two-phase commit.